What's going on everybody? Brad Poor Boys Garage. So we're back on the 70, the series that'll never end. It'll never get out of this garage ever. But anyway, we're gonna keep on continuing. 440's dropped in as you've seen in the last video. And if you haven't, it's down below somewhere. Tranny's going in today. Let's continue putting this bad boy 70 Cornet 500 back together. Here we go. All right, if you're just tuning in, there's about four videos left down in all my videos of how this car started, the story behind it, if you wanted to follow along, if you're trying to looking for his some history on it. But if not, we're gonna drop this, well, we already dropped the 440 in it. I'm gonna put this tranny in today. I think we could, man I think we can manage doing that. We got this 383 that came out of the car, not numbers matching, just the 383 that was in it originally that was not happy. I think it's got a flat cam in it. We are going to pull the flex plate in the back today, get that on the 440. And if you guys are just, well, if you're a fan and you followed me on the video I did on those dirt bikes not too long ago, just want to let you guys know we ended up getting them. So two Hadakas, 71, I think they're 70, 72, so like 73 maybe. A 77 Yamaha YZ we grabbed, and my brother grabbed this old Yamaha Maxima 650 that we're going to do a running and driving on that coming up we're going to do a running and driving on the YZ coming up that should be fun and the Hadakas I'm not sure what we're going to do on those yet I just thought I'd share that with you guys kind of excited about that I love them old dirt bikes and they're hard to find too I think I found more chargers than I have old dirt bikes All right, if you guys know, and I know most of you car guys do, this is a 2500 stall converter, by the way, so it should be perfect for this 440 street, street motor style setup here we got going on. But on these, fly, or these uh, flex plates, there's always one hole that's off. And the best thing that I've found to do is instead of getting this transmission up there and this torque converter, you gotta spin it and then you go ahead and put the torque converter bolts in and you figure out, oh, that last one's off and you got to, yeah, you know the deal. I put it up there first and um, I try to match up the holes. It goes like that. First. Wow, that's way off, ain't it? Well, this flex plate is way off this torque converter, so I'm gonna have to go back in the back. Let me see if I have another flex plate that's a little bit smaller than that one. And let's see if we got, I know I had a couple flex plates in here. I just don't know. 
if they're the right one. This place is a, a disaster. I keep all my parts in here and I'm usually a pretty organized guy. And um, not so much on this, but I got junk everywhere. If anybody needs 1968 Charger taillights, let me know. I got a stack of them in here. And I'll get rid of them too because they're just sitting here and they need to go to a good home. I'm never going to do nothing with them. Watch the day I say that to you guys. Somebody will buy them and then I'll find a 68 Charger and I'll need one. That's the way it works. Anyway, yeah, here's, here's my flex plate. So let's go put this on and uh, let's see how it's any better. There you go. So see, that's the way I do it. I just put it around, then I match the holes up, and then you know, and this with this orange old spray paint I did from a long time ago, or whatever car that came off, there's already a white hole, which probably somebody marked the one that's offset. I like to turn them down like this, so when I get the transmission up in there, I know exactly that, okay, I put it in this hole, I spin it. Now I got that hole, that hole, that hole. So let's go ahead and put the flex plate on. Let's find some, some, uh, some bolts for this uh, torque converter. And then let's go ahead and pump this thing up into the back of this 440. I'm tired of looking at it. Our transmission is just about in. I'll show you that. We got the trans mount right here and it's, everybody knows what these are. And this thing is just a greased out, nasty. Ugh. So what we're gonna do, I can't stand putting greasy parts back in this car, even though it is ratty and it's an old 70. You know, it's an old 70. It's not like pristine or anything, but I don't like when they're all nasty and greasy and I could clean them and put them back in, paint them and make them look half a presentable but anyway let's get this thing out to the pressure washer and let's clean her up let's paint it let's get her back in we're gonna get this transmission done today we got a little friend here i guess that wants to hang out what you doing boy yeah get back in there One of the things I was told my buddy to grab was uh, one of these bad to the bone mini starters. I love these things. <clears throat> every car, it seems like every Mopar I get, I'm always running headers. So I, I always end up buying a mini starter. And I've had good luck with the expensive $300 ones. I put a $300 one on my drag car just so I wouldn't have no issues. And then I even buy the little cheap $100 ones. And, um, I think that might be what this is. And uh, they seem to do good, every one of them. This is a Speedmaster. Every one of them uh, seem to do all right. So I've had no issues yet. So I guess it's Speedmaster, Mini Starter, can't go wrong. All right guys, back at it. Last I left off, we did the starter. And while the camera was off, I was doing some headers and I just wanted to get them in and I was gonna show you guys the end product. Now we all know that headers are the 
best sounding, baddest thing on the car, makes all the awesome performance sound great, but they are a drama to get put in. And let me tell you, these ones here, and I'm not trying to talk a lot of smack about products, but these um, are ceramic coated. Not, you know, when you first look at them, you're like, these are a nice set of hairs. But what these are is these are a knockoff out of JEGS, made in China. Knockoff like Doug's headers, you know, like the expensive $800, $900 headers. And I'll tell you what, man, I've done a jack ton of headers just like I'm sure you did. And uh, I'm not impressed with these at all. And the reason why is one, <clears throat> all the bolt holes, the flange holes, I should say, they start lining up right here, no problem. You get your first, second bolt in, your third bolt gets in a little tighter. And as you move, and believe me, there ain't nothing you can do. I wiggled, I pulled, I've done everything you can. But when you get to this end, these last two, maybe even three, they're off. Like, and I'm not saying they're off by a lot, maybe like a, a 16th on a tape measure. I mean, it's nothing, but it's just enough to make that bolt want to go in there crooked. And once you start running them in crooked, you know, you're hoping that it'll straighten out and it don't. Drive shaft is in. One thing I did notice and I don't like, leave me a comment, let me know what you guys think on this one. I can't remember what an original OEM length of a 70 Cornet drive shaft is supposed to be. But this right here, and I know she's up on the lift and I know once you put her down, it'll go in a little bit. But I already did put her down uh, a couple hours ago. Yeah, and it goes in, but not that far. That's a lot sticking out right there. That means I probably only literally have an inch in this tail shaft. So we're gonna have to, this will work just, you know, to get it running and drive and rip it down the street. But man, I'll start getting crazy and want to start getting down with this car. I don't know if that's gonna make the cut. We are almost there guys. We are getting close. All I need is a points distributor 440. I don't want to use. Let me show you what we are eventually doing here too. <clears throat> we are going to put the sniper on this thing, the EFI. I don't want to use a, oh, that um, sniper EFI HyperSpark yet. I want to, I don't want to do anything. I want to keep all this as one unit. So what I'm going to need to do is find a uh, 440 points distributor so I can break the motor, break in the cam and all that stuff. Because if I put this together and then we try breaking in the engine, you know I'm not going to be able to get this on the first shot to run awesome. And then if that motor keeps, that engine keeps shutting down, starting up, shutting down, and I'm trying to have all this stuff, I got to troubleshoot. It's not even worth it. All the aggravation. So I'd rather just put a carb on it, a points distributor, fire her up, and then call it, you know, break that cam in or whatever. Yeah, this is the bad boy there. I'm not even going to open all that crap. But anyway, that's the long term goal, all that kind of stuff. Short term goal is just to get this thing running. We can start running some plugs. I'm going to put the radiator back in it. We don't have a power steering pump yet. My buddy's supposed to order that. That's okay though. Uh, I didn't put the steering column back in yet. I've just, it's been so much easier with that thing out and I don't even want to put it back in right now. I will eventually do that. And painted the fan up because we're going to run a fan, uh, old school fan on this thing. Down the road he may, and I'm sure he will, put a, uh, electric fan back on it but for now that is it we are going to continue on we are getting close
guys back at it. We are on our last obstacle before we start this car. And I got a feeling we're gonna have to close this video and I'm not gonna be able to start it for you guys and I'm upset about it because I'm missing just a few more parts. We're gonna get the steering column in today. Get it all back together. What else do we need? We need a distributor. And I think I gotta do just a couple little odds and ends. Nothing crazy ain't even worth telling you because I don't really remember. And we can start it. So yeah, let's get this let's get this steering column in. One of the things I had to buy was these Mopar steering column inserts. Just got them on eBay. They weren't too expensive. But on all a lot of, on a lot of the B body, well, Mopars that carry these, which are probably most of them, they always dry rot, and that old plastic just crumbles. So we got a new set of these. I think these are like I don't know, 19 bucks if that. So and then here she is, the infamous steering column. Try to do this very methodically here. I've done it by myself before, but it's a pain in the ass, in the butt. The steering column's already locked up. Let's see, it needs to go like this. Yeah, that's right. I don't get blinded here. All right. I don't know if you can see through there, but I'm aiming for that spline on the gearbox to match this up. So. All right, so we got the steering column in. It's loose, but I'm gonna just knock the pin in here for this little knuckle. And that should be about done on that. It's pretty well in there. I just want to get one more little love tap on it. And I don't have anything that I could really use. There. All right. We're done. All right, guys. I know you're sticking with me on this. 20 part series. It's not gonna be that long, I promise. We're probably only gonna do about two more of these. We are so dang close, I can taste it. We got everything dang near hooked up, ready to go. I'm just missing a few more parts, like a distributor, I gotta get that. Uh, tie up just a few loose ends, nothing crazy. And on the next video, we are gonna fire it up. I did wanna fire it up for, for this video. It's just gonna take too long. I don't have the parts in my hand. But I want to push this video out to you so we can move on to something else. We got the steering column in today. If you haven't seen the inside of this car yet, if you're new to this series, I'll just show you real quick. Just a, you know, 70 Cornet, just a ratty old console shift Cornet. 500, you know, real deal. If you're into those, Cornet 500s. I forgot to show you last time what this engine has supposedly been done by the gentleman who built it. It's supposed to be about 450 horsepower. It's been bored 30. It's been decked. It's got a comp cam in it. 284, 507, <clears throat> 296, 510. That's what it says, TAC. I don't know if that's the parts number. I don't know what that is. It's got comp lifters. It's got a melling uh, high, high HP oil pump. High performance is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, it's got new valves. It's balanced. It's got a It's got ARP. Why do I always say AARP? It's got ARP bolts. It's got the seven quart oil pan. <clears throat> new bearings. Uh, it's got a three bolt timing set in it. I mean, it should be a good running 440. We shall see. We opened it up when we first got it, and just to double check exactly what you know he says it is. 
all 10 to 1 compression too. And everything looked to be jiving with the paper and what he told my buddy on it so i do not think we should have we will have too many issues knock on wood i'm excited i hope you guys are excited i really wanted to start this up before this last video and it's just not happening i just need a few more things it's going to be one more i promise we're going to start it now if you remember kind of towards the beginning of this video the drive shaft is the wrong drive shaft a buddy of mine came over said that's an a body drive shaft that was actually the one that was was in the car and they were using we were using to drive it who, who would have thought that it was so short up on the yoke going into the uh, tail shaft i never would have thought that until i put it in there and then i'm like holy crap that's not right so you, we literally have like an inch into the tail shaft right now which is fine you know well it's not fine but it's okay to drive slowly you know nothing don't womp on it don't get crazy with it but it's fine i mean we already took it a few miles anyway with the old 383 in it so i'm not really too scared but our big thing is getting this thing fired up break this cam in so that's the series on this one we will continue and we will get this thing fired up we will definitely start ripping this thing one of these days but anyway we're gonna prime up the engine on the next one. I gotta dump a bunch of, I think I dumped, I've already got oil in it, but I wanna put the tranny fluid in and make sure it doesn't leak. And put some power steering fluid in it, some blinker fluid, and we should be ready. Anyway, stay with me on this one. I know it's a long one. My name's Brad Pool Boys, gradual and rip, not rock. Keep on saving them, don't send them to the crusher. Until next time. We are out, never any cornet.